these researchers saying how you can only uh, absorb, digest, and assimilate this small amount of protein? Yeah, I mean, that's basically not true. So there are plenty of people eating one meal a day, and they're completely fine. If that was true, humans would have become extinct a long time ago. And we have all these animals, you know, like a lion who eats a gazelle, you know, once a week and a, a cat that eats a mouse every other day. And uh, obviously animals can eat protein in these boluses. And then you get this, um, you get all sorts of pooling of the amino acids. So there's this splanchnic bed that pull in your GI tract that pulls some aminos and you have this increased amount of aminos in your bloodstream for, you know, up to 24 hours afterwards. And so there are all these reasons why you can eat protein uh, higher amounts less frequently, and it's very slow to digest. That's the other thing. There's this ileal break in your small intestine where the more the huger piece of protein you eat, the more it slows down your GI tract and kind of meters out the aminos. So honestly, like I really don't worry about people who are just eating, you know, maybe twice a day. Personally, I think shrinking it all the way down to once a day, it's a little hard to get enough protein in. And so Meal frequency is on a U-shaped curve as well. And I think once a day or less is probably really far from optimal, but like nobody eats, needs to eat like 12 times a day. And so, you know, I, I like two, two meals in a snack a day or somewhere around there. Yeah, absolutely. Blood urea, nitrogen, BUN. So anytime you get a basic metabolic panel or a comprehensive metabolic panel from your doctor, um, <clears throat> part of the kidney function is blood urea, nitrogen. This is just a, basically um, an ammonia, like a protein breakdown factor that's in your blood that you're filtering out in your kidneys. And they establish the normal range of blood urea, nitrogen, not by looking at what where humans should be, but just from everyone who goes to the lab. So if you take every trillion people who go to the lab, and graph out all their BUNs on this little bell-shaped curve, you just put the upper and lower limits of normal at two standard deviations away from the mean on the high end and low end. Everybody on these super high protein diets are gonna be way up here on the high end of blood urea and nitrogen, and it's gonna be reported as high, and your doctor's gonna be like, oh, I don't know what's wrong, maybe something's wrong with your kidneys. As long as your creatinine is fine and your glomerular filtration rate is fine, uh, it, kind of doesn't matter how high your BUN is. And we definitely see these higher and higher on people on higher, on higher and higher protein diets. It does seem to be harmless. Do you support digestion with enzymes? I really don't, but I am aware of the fact that some people, when they really up their protein, struggle with, with abdominal pain and digestion and all this stuff. And that's why I am a fan of slowly progressing things. And I find that most people, if they progress slowly, they usually don't have to go that route. I mean, there's always exceptions. I have patients, you know, with chronic pancreatitis and they're taking all sorts of pancreatic enzymes. They kind of have to do that. But the average person, if they're just slowly progressing, they can uh, kind of adapt and get used to it and upregulate their production of certain digestive enzymes. Yeah, I don't really, it's not age specific for me. I pretty much recommend everybody target a gram per pound of ideal body weight. Um, and I really think that as you get older, it's more and more important to target that, and it's a bigger deal, and we do see anabolic resistance. It appears to be that the amount of protein available to trigger uh, uh, hypertrophy and anabolism, you need a higher threshold. So you, you literally have to eat more protein to get to the same threshold for anabolism. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.